Thank you. My name is Alyssa Mortensen, and I'm the artistic director of Nabunale Theatre, which is a collaborative theatre company, which means that on the first day of rehearsal, we all show up without a play, and we make it together. So uh, I'm not talking about improv tonight, Brady. I'm actually going to talk about ways of making collaborative art. Uh, of course, every group project is collaborative in some sense, um, because you've got a group of people working together. But what I'm talking about when I say collaborative is a group of people um, owning the entire vision for the project together rather than just their piece. So everybody has that level of investment in what's going on. When I say collaborative to people, they often think that what I mean is uh, an absence of hierarchy or a lack of specificity or a bunch of different ideas jammed together with some weak transitions. Obviously, none of those are desirable. What I'm going for in collaborative project is some kind of beautiful chaos that all these different ideas and opinions and emotions and mindsets will be channeled into something that's more complex and layered than a single person could make. Uh, of course, it works perfectly every time. This is absolutely true. <laughs> it's actually a little tricky. Um, but it's really fun. And the people you get to work with and the in level of inspiration and when it's really singing, it's going, it's, you're skipping along. It's, I've never been so happy all the time as when I'm... It's really fucking hard. Um, so I spent a lot of time thinking about uh, how to make it good, because it really is amazing when it's working well. And there are three things I've identified that are really important uh, to work as a collaborative artist. Um, one of them is to listen, to listen to the spaces in between ideas, not just your collaborators, but the silences are important. I'll get to that. Uh, let go of your ideas about what it's going to be, because it's not going to be that. And keep moving forward, even if it looks like it's going to be disaster. First tenet of Nabunale work is that everyone in the room is a leader. They're all responsible for the project, and even in rehearsals, we take turns leading at first, um, so that everyone can see everyone else's expertise, respect it, and have that level of investment. They are running the project. So obviously everyone's not in charge all the time. That would be chaos. I'm not eschewing well-defined roles, and we do have directors. There needs to be somebody who sees the whole thing. Um, our roles are not defined well just by job function, though. We define roles based on group dynamic as well. So Paul is a great actor. He's also really good at translating questions between people who don't understand each other. And Beth is a great light designer. She's really good at fomenting rebellion and bringing disagreements to the surface that really need to be spoken out loud. We explicitly address those. So when everybody owns the project, everybody cares a lot. And that makes the fights a lot worse, because their passion's on the line, their ego's on the line. Um, I would like to argue that uh, when smart people disagree, that's a gift. Because when two smart people are talking about something uh, and they don't agree, that means they're both wrong. It means that the third thing that neither one of them has thought of yet has yet to be revealed. And this is the process by which it is revealed. And that third thing is the thing that makes them stop and go, oh, and everyone else lies down on the floor in ecstasy. It's wonderful. Um, this means that you have to have a fair level of comfort with uncertainty. Uh, the third thing doesn't always just pop up. So you have to wait and not know what to do sometimes. And that's a gift too, because that's when the thing you didn't expect creeps in. What do you do when nobody has any idea? Stacy Klein of Double Edge Theatre says, theatre isn't worth watching unless it's impossible. Uh, I'd like to add, uh, ideas are all expectable because a human thought of them. Right? So your job is to get through all of your ideas, try everything you can think of, and once you run out of ideas, that's when the work starts. That's when there's room for the thing you couldn't have thought of, for the energy between you two sort of erupts into something unexpected and beautiful. It happens and it's glorious. Late in the process, two or three weeks before you open, you suddenly realize you need to change the order of four scenes, rewrite a monologue, and introduce a new character. I say, do it actually. Um, with new work, I think good bones are more important than polish, and you know the piece better toward the end than you have ever known it before. That's when you should be doing that work. Um, keep the thread. Everyone in the group has to agree on the story you're telling, and that requires constant communication about it, constant conversa daily conversations about it, because it will morph, but it should morph together with everyone going in the same direction. This is totally impossible, right? <laughs> You have six or seven brilliant people in a room, and they're all going different directions, um, and they're fighting about it, and things are crazy, and you just personally attack somebody, and oh my god, and it's really important because everybody's ego is on the line. Um, but uh, stick with it. You know, if you crash and burn, make a sculpture out of the charred and smoking bits of metal because, um, you know, unlike pilots, if we artists fuck up, nobody dies. So we're basically <laughs> obligated to take risks. So. Listen to the silences. Let go of your idea about it, what it has to be and keep moving forward. You will make something that is surprising to you and it will make people think. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.